So I don't think it's any secret that Activision Blizzard has been a really dog shit company for a really long time now. I don't think the purchase by Microsoft changed anything and their mishandling of every IP that they own as well as every professional sports league that they run has just been a fucking disaster. They've managed to literally destroy everything that they just so happen to put their hands on and they just infect everything with the disease that is their poor management and executive decision making abilities. What I'm about to go over today is the perfect example of what I've just said coming to fruition. So for those of you who don't know, Hex, the current owner of Optic Gaming, one of the biggest, most notorious gaming organizations in the entire world, and one of the biggest professional, former professional Call of Duty players in the entire world, Scump, are actually suing Activision. So they have a couple of big allegations. Um, I'm pretty sure I can kind of guess who put in certain, um, I guess, grievances in this lawsuit that they filed. Um, so there's one that there's the big grievance that everybody's pointing out is that they're suing because of Activision running a monopoly on Call of Duty. That doesn't really make much sense to me. And here's why, because technically speaking, not even technically, literally speaking, Activision Blizzard owns Call of Duty outright, period. There's no way around that. They own the IP, they own the trademark, they own everything related to that. So you can't really necessarily argue like, oh, they have a monopoly on Call of Duty. That's not fair. Da 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 da. Well, my brother in Christ, they own it. You know, that's like saying I have a monopoly on my house. Well, I own it. You know, nobody gets to tell me what I do with my house with the exception of me. And I mean, the HOA, but again, that's a different topic for another. That's a different discussion. Now, Another grievance that they also filed is that apparently Hex had to actually sell part of Optic in order to make it into the Call of Duty League, which is huge. That's that's a really that's a, a fucking month like that's an atrocity. That's actually a that's has to be a crime somewhere. Some I just burped. Sorry, I had to cut that out. Anyways, that has to be a crime somewhere. There's just no way that that's justifiable. Somebody wants to invest in your business or invest in, I don't know, your sports league, whatever, and you force them to sell or change ownership in exchange for gaining access to the league. I actually believe that their reasoning behind it wasn't, I, I don't know if this is speculation, but I think Hex was basically saying that they had allegedly said um, that Hex wasn't exactly the prime fit for the investors that they were looking to have into the Call of Duty League. Like he didn't fit the mold, so to speak. Now, I don't know if that's a race thing because, you know, Hex is just your average Joe. I mean, he's Mexican, you know what I mean? So it could be a race thing. Maybe they're just like, oh, yeah, we need uh, Joe Schmo, not uh, Taco Guerrera, which is kind of fucked up, right? But it also could be a thing that they were just saying he didn't fit the mold for the investors that they're looking for in terms of when you think billionaire, you probably think some guy, fancy suit, you know, tie, nice shoes, expensive, fancy car, whatever. Whereas Hex, again, is just, I mean, dude, Hex is a man of the people. Like, Hex dresses nice, you know, but he dresses kind of like street nice, you know, like he's got a nice hat on and he's got like a cool jacket, whatever. Generally, he's wearing something optic branded, you know, whether it's his shirt or his hat or something, you know, he's got nice jeans on. Sometimes he's got uh, not slacks, but what are they called? Kind of like just like casual wear pants, I guess, you know, and then generally, I think I've seen him on the watch party that they do for the call of duty league where rocking like air forces or something sometimes sometimes something different like if it's jordan's or whatever um you know so he doesn't if that's what they meant okay that's still a little fucked up but if if it was the other way that's really fucked up another point i want to bring up is with hex being told to sell a majority of the team and things like that it's not like he sold some small chunk like, oh, he just sold 51%. Like he had to sell, I believe they were, he quoted it as 92.5% of Optic in order for them to get into the league. He sold 92.5% of the team that he solely owned so that he could be a part of the Call of Duty League and its quote-unquote success, which is funny because that's exactly how Activision Blizzard described it, even though success is not the word that anybody with a half a brain would call it. And so, and another topic I want to bring up, or another point I want to bring up, is that if you don't know, Hex actually, I mean, Hex built Optic from the ground up. He's talked about it before on a podcast where essentially, I mean, before I believe him and his wife were working as realtors, 
and you know optic was taking off whatever or i'm sorry not optic wasn't taking off my apologies but like they kind of went through the recession and that's when he threw all of his chips you know he pushed them all into the center of the table and bet on optic and it just so happened to turn out great i mean i, want, I don't want to say it just so happened because that's kind of like belittling his hard work i mean he really worked to make that this dream come true he started his own business from what was essentially nothing in in a in a um, sector that was kind of untapped at the time. I mean, competitive games were a thing, but not to the level that Optic was taking it. You know, uploading montages, competing in major tournaments, team houses, things like that. Nobody else was really doing that. I mean, they pioneered it. Optic pioneered it, and then other teams followed suit. So, it's really it really is shameful. You know that uh, looking at the way that Activision kind of treated him and the way that they treated Optic. And some of the things, some of the tough decisions that Hex was forced to make. It's really just despicable. Something that's super interesting that actually gets pointed out in this lawsuit is Call of Duty being exclusive to YouTube. Now, not Call of Duty the game, but the, the CDL, the Call of Duty League, being exclusive to the YouTube streaming platform, right? Or the YouTube, I guess, video platform. Obviously, they do live stream on there. But anyways, last year was one of the biggest years for viewership for the Call of Duty League because it was on Twitch and YouTube. Streamers were doing watch parties for it. I remember, I think Scumpy himself did his watch party with methods and everything like that. Um, and they, if I remember correctly, I think they peaked at like 250,000 viewers on their stream when Optic played Phase and, you know, during champs for the finals and everything like that. Like it was major viewership and that was just the watch party. That's not even the official stream. You know, I'm sure if you added in all the watch parties, all the official streams, whatever, it probably totaled out to, I'd be willing to wager probably over 500,000 viewers, probably pushing 600,000. I mean, Call of Duty is not entirely dead. The game is still well and alive and streamers are still into it and still playing the game and everything like that. And so when you have this major product that obviously every, not everybody, but a decent amount of people are into, you know, why wouldn't you want that to be available everywhere to increase the eyeballs looking at your product? But in the offseason, Activision, of course, made the shit decision to make the league exclusive to YouTube. So for the first stream of the year, they ended up hitting Scump offline on Twitch by copyright claiming his watch party that he was doing on Twitch. He was streaming on both YouTube and Twitch. Twitch was just the face cam, though, just the watch party cam. They weren't showing any gameplay, and they still hit them off. The reason that I bring that up is because... It's alleged that apparently Activision had a deal with Google in that if they made the CDL exclusive to YouTube, that they would get a discount, a major discount actually, on a lot of the cloud services that Google offers on like the servers, storage space, whatever, all that jazz. They essentially, so it was kind of like a quid pro quo kind of deal, which again, they're allowed to do technically because it's their game. You know, it's like, a, it's kind of like a, hey, you do this, I'll do that whatever, scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. But it's still really shitty that they did that, knowing that people eat off of this. You know, there are people here who, they play Call of Duty for a living. You know, they wake up, grind the game, practice, whatever, so that they can be one of the best, so that they can compete in these tournaments and get paid. And so, how much they get paid is indicative of how successful the league is. And when you're intentionally hampering the growth and support that the league gets, for a few extra to save a few yourself a few dollars you're intentionally screwing over the people who are competing in your league and making it what it is i'd be willing to bet that every single team that has bought into the call of duty league has is however many millions in the hole simply because they have a, a spot in the cdl when i read through this lawsuit and hex having to lose 92 and a half percent of optic you know and activision making the game the cdl exclusive to youtube and a couple other of the grievances that are listed saying that, you know, Hex not being the prime example of the investors that they want and things like that. Reading through the lawsuit is actually, it's, it's fucking sad, man. It's really sad how they're just intentionally destroying this league and seeing that all of these teams are kind of in the hole. And I'd be willing to bet that they just kind of want to break even and get the hell out of there. What's really hilarious is that Activision actually put out a statement and it's probably the most dog shit statement that I've ever seen in my life. And so what I mean by that is, I'll go ahead and I'll read it. Mr. Rodriguez, a.k.a. Optic Hex, and Mr. Abner, a.k.a. Scump, demanded that Activision pay them tens of millions of dollars to avoid this meritless litigation. 
I'm not sure that it's meritless, but go on. And when their demands were not met, they filed. We will strongly defend against these claims, which have no basis in fact or in law. We are disappointed that these members of the esports community would bring this suit, which is disruptive to team owners, players, fans, and partners who have invested so much time and energy into the Call of Duty League success. So I'm kind of chuckling there because Call of Duty League success is is those two those two phrases should not go hand in hand at all. Call of Duty League and success. Those two things could not be further apart on the fucking spectrum. It is absolutely hilarious. The Call of Duty League has been a massive fucking failure. The only time Call of Duty was successful was when it was in the CWL era. That was when Activision was going all in on hosting these events and making it a big deal for everybody, so on and so forth, and allowing teams to freely compete. This whole idea of franchising and buying a spot for millions of dollars to compete in the league, whatever, whatever, it, it's failed tremendously. You see this in the other franchised esports that they had. I mean, where's the Overwatch League right now? Exactly. That thing fucking exploded and died in a fiery crash. It was horrible. I, I've never seen such an ugly death. It was, it was really bad. I mean, not only did they manage to completely... Fu they forced an esport onto a game that didn't need it. Then, after forcing the esport complete like build they built the fucking league and then mismanaged the fuck out of it by making it exclusive to youtube again it just it, they don't have a good track record of making good decisions for their leagues so i have a forgive me if i have a seriously hard time believing that the call of duty league is somehow successful or that you would even have the fucking audacity or the gall the fucking chutzpah to call this league a success and then to pretend that your concern is the players, the fans, the teams, da 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 you don't give a fuck about any of that. If you did, you wouldn't make the dumbass decision to make the league exclusive to YouTube, and you wouldn't make half the decisions that you're making in terms of make in terms of the league only having like what, sixteen teams? Like that's fucking trash. It's not even an international league anymore. Like there are Call of Duty players in Europe who don't even get to compete in the CDL because if they if they want to, they have to travel to the US for it. They have to get a visa. They have to do all the traveling. We used to have, I believe it was what, the Paris Legion and the London Royal Ravens. So that was kind of big. Two of the largest countries in Europe have a team in the CDL. They're allowed to compete, whatever. And you get players from different nationalities all comp all competing in the league. But now, even though we still have EU players, there are 20 different hurdles for them to jump through before they can even compete in the league over here in the U.S., and if I remember correctly, earlier in the season, I don't remember the name of the player, but earlier on in the season, a player actually lost his spot on the team because he couldn't get a visa. Is Like, is that insane? Am I the only one not sipping stupid juice? That's insane. That's insane. Homie could have competed in the EU had there been EU teams. Now, I don't know the marketing data or anything like that. I don't know how popular Call of Duty is in Europe in comparison to other games so on and so forth, whatever. But I know that there still is an audience over there. There are still people who want to compete and they would love the opportunity. But when you snatch that away from them and then pretend that your concern is the players, the fans, whoever the fuck, that's kind of backwards. Like you're, the, the words are not matching the actions. Maybe I'm stupid, but the, the words are not matching the actions and you should absolutely feel ashamed of yourself. All in all, the lawsuit's seeking about $680 million in damages um, between... Hex's ownership share and Optic, the damages there, the damages to the players, damages to other teams, and so on and so forth. They've summed it up to about $680 million, which is pretty wild. I don't see them being successful in getting half a billion dollars from Activision. I definitely see this being settled outside of court somehow. But at the same time, I mean, this is also optic which is a million dollar organization compared to well i don't want to say a million because i'm sure they're worth more than one million dollars but this is they're a multi-million dollar organization versus a multi-billion dollar company that now has the backing of microsoft which is a trillion dollar company so i don't exist i don't necessarily see this turning out well for them and it really kind of sucks because given given the odds that they face should hex and skump lose I mean, Activision might not even allow them to be part of the CDL anymore. And I foresee a CDL that completely implodes without the presence of Optic. Because the only other notable organization that you're going to have there is going to be FaZe. Those are the two most large and well-known 
gaming organizations in the world. Activision, or I'm sorry, not Activision, Optic and Phase. They go together like peanut butter and jelly. That, that's it. So, I don't know. I guess we'll see how it turns out, but I just wanted to talk about it today. See you.